start this Rizzo report at Chavez Ravine or really with the Los Angeles Dodgers and don't call it a comeback but maybe just maybe that's exactly what it is for Cody Bellinger. Everybody wanted to run him out of town, send him down, option him out, get rid of him, trade him, do everything. Cody Bellinger is doing nothing except what Cody Bellinger did when everybody fell in love with him. He hit two home runs in the Dodgers 10-2 win over the Padres on Sunday. So far, just three home runs, six extra base hits, a slugging percentage of 870 in his last six games. His hard hit rate, not bad. Jumped from 34.4% last year to 51.4% this year. Overall, still looking to get the average up. It's at 273, but he does have four long balls. He's driven in eight in his first 15 games. Last year, he didn't hit his fourth home run until July 10th, his 33rd game of the season. So whatever it was, maybe he's had enough time for that shoulder to heal. Maybe he has figured out his batting stance again. Maybe he just has cleared himself up mentally. It appears that Cody Bellinger is at least on his way back to the form that we became, that we came to love when it came to Bopper. If you ask Justin Turner, Bopper is back. All right, Jazz Chisholm doesn't have the exact resume that Cody Bellinger has, but perhaps this guy is a star in the making. Chisholm 727 slugging is tied with Nolan Arenado for the Major League Baseball lead. That's very good company when you're talking about the same category that Nolan Arenado is in. He has nine extra base hits for the Marlins, including four home runs, 15 RBIs in his first 13 games. A little bit of swagger. Okay, a lot of swagger. That's fine. Let the kids play. Have a good time. On Saturday, he led off the game with a home run on the first pitch of the game off of Ian Anderson in the bottom of the inning. Ozzie Albies did the same thing for the Braves off of Hernandez as well. Chisholm is one of the fastest players in baseball. His sprint speed this year is in the 97th percentile. Reminds me a little bit of D. Gordon, just with a lot more pop than D. Gordon. All right, Zach Wheeler, is it time to start worrying about the Philadelphia Phillies pitcher. I'm not certain what's going on with him. I'm sure he's going to figure it out. The good ones do, but his four-seamer velocity has dropped to 95 and 94.4 miles an hour in his first two starts, but it was back up to 96 on Saturday, so that is a good, a good sign to see as far as that's concerned. Now, last year, though, his velocity on that fastball, 97.2 on that four-seamer. It was the second highest in all of baseball behind only Garrett Cole. And that's a minimum of 1,004 seamers thrown. But velocity is such a topic of conversation these days. And when it comes to Zach Wheeler, it's definitely down. Now, his catcher, JT Real Muto, said it's the best stuff we've seen from him so far this year, talking about Saturday. It was just more crisp, a little sharper. It was more of what we saw from him last year. And again, he was the ace of the Philadelphia Philly staff last year because Aaron Nola just didn't seem to have, have it last year. So is it time, Chris, to start thinking about being a little bit concerned when it comes to Zach Wheeler, albeit early, shortened spring training, we get that, but velocity always seems to be a topic of conversation. Yeah, I have to be a little worried about it. And the Phillies, too, there, Alana. Remember, they won their first two games of the year against Oakland, and now they're 6 and 10. So they've lost 10 of 14. You know, they have not had a lot of history of winning recently. I mean, they have not made the postseason since they've had Harper, not his fault, but they haven't uh, made the postseason since he's been there. They've already lost two out of three to the Mets. They have to play in New York next week. They don't play well at City Field. And the Mets are 12 and 5. So, you know, right out of the gate, they put themselves in a little bit of a hole in that division. Part of it, as you said, is, is Wheeler. So I would be a little concerned by him. No question about it. The Phillies, you know, he hasn't been able to throw Harper, so he's been a DH. Phillies haven't played that well, so that is something that we'll keep an eye on. And you said 100% right on Wheeler as far as his health is concerned. They need him going here, but they haven't played well in this division. They lost to the Marlins. They lost to the Mets. They lost to the Rockies. You know, they lose the series here to Milwaukee. I mean, they want to say, I mean, they really they won one series. So I would be a little concerned uh, about Philadelphia. You're right about Chisholm. He's a very, very good player. And one thing about Bellinger, you know, in a big game, he can do so many things. He runs the base as well. He's a very good defender at multiple positions. And don't forget, he got the hit last year that beat the Giants for the Dodgers in game five in the, ten, in the ninth inning against, uh, against the reliever there. They got the base hit up the uh, right center field to give him that lead. So, I mean, uh, th despite the fact he can be very streaky and strike out a million times, you know, remember, in 17, he struck out a million times, yet the one hit he got, he won a World Series game. 
against the Astros in Houston. He has a tendency to rise to the occasion. And you're right, I wouldn't worry too much about him. Good job. Well, I think it's, you, you, have to give him, you have to give him a little bit of a pass after having that shoulder surgery. Nobody is quite right right, right away after that shoulder surgery. And I'm sure right. mentally it got to him, too. Cody was very much in his own head. It looks good to see him kind of start getting the traction back to where he was. And I'm certainly not blaming the Philadelphia Phillies' woes all on Zach Wheeler. That is not fair. they got to get it going on all facets of the game.